All right, well, let's get started. Um, welcome everyone. Tonight we have Dr. Maribel Santos Cordero, and um, I'm gonna invite you guys to learn a little bit more about her. Dr. Maribel Santos Cordero was born and raised in San Juan, Puerto Rico. She earned a DMD degree from the University of Puerto Rico School of Dental Medicine with high honors and has been practicing dentistry since 1994. She practiced as a general dentist for five years in a small town in Puerto Rico. As the only general dentist willing to treat little ones, she soon discovered her passion for children and decided to pursue a specialty in pediatrics. Dr. Santos Cordero, completed a two-year residency program in pediatric dentistry at the Children's Hospital of Buffalo, New York City. Since 2002, she has been treating children at her practice, Dentistry for Children and Adolescents in Sarasota, Florida. A firm believer of the quote, if you can't repay a favor, pay it forward. She often volunteers her time and services to those in need through various church and community events. Since 2012, she has organized a Give Kids a Smile event at her office and provided free dental treatment to children from disadvantaged homes with limited access to care. She also gives back to the community by providing consultations and treatment to patients with cleft lip and palate and other craniofacial deformities. In her spare time, she is heavily involved in her nonprofit organization, Ride to Remember, to raise awareness and funds for Alzheimer's disease research. Dr. Santos Cordero believes that learning is a never ending process. She is a diplomat of the American Board of Pediatric Dentistry a fellow of the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry, and a member in good standing of the Academy of Laser Dentistry, the Florida Academy of Pediatric Dentistry, the American Dental Association, and its uh, local affiliates. Dr. Santos has been a guest lecturer at dental schools and other dental organizations at a national and international level. She has privileges to practice dental surgery at the John Hopkins All Children's Hospital in St. Petersburg and has been on staff since 2002. Dr. Santos Cordero believes in helping children achieve their full potential by providing all the necessary tools to guide their growth and development and has made it her mission to provide genuine care by focusing on the entire health of the children she treats. What an amazing story. We are so, so lucky to have Dr. Santos here presenting today. So um, Dr. Santos, I'm gonna hand it over to you. We can't wait to hear your story. Well, hi everyone. And thank you, Jessica. Thank you all for joining us tonight. We are going to be talking about a condition that is affecting millions of children. Um, this is a topic that I'm very passionate about and it's very dear to my heart. One of my boys suffered from sleep-related breathing disorders. And you know, I wish that back then we would have known more about this condition because it would have saved us the trouble of having to figure out what was happening to him as he struggled with many of the symptoms that we're going to be talking about in this webinar tonight. So now I'm on a mission to help other families identify these problems and guide them to a solution. So let's get started. So what is something as simple as breathing could be interfering with your child's success in life? There is a silent crisis among America's children. Um, our children are get, being diagnosed on a daily basis with one or two or more of the symptoms that you see on your screen right now. Um, ADD, ADHD. These are children that are very fidgety during the day or they're spaced out, they can't concentrate. They do homework with their legs up in the, air, on the, in the air and the head down towards the floor. Literally, that's how my son would memorize his spelling words. Um, bedwetting beyond the appropriate age. Difficulty in school, especially in the areas of math and science and spelling. Not because they do not have the intelligence to do it, it's just it becomes a little bit more difficult for them to um, work these concepts. Mouth breathing and snoring. And that can go from breathing difficulties to you know, quiet snoring and, and even sleep apnea. 
where there's an obstruction. Um, these are the kids that you flip a coin when you go away on vacation because you don't want to sleep with them on, in the same bed. You know, they're, they're kicking all, all around the bed, they're moving around, pillows and sheets are all over on the floor. Um, these are children who have a hard time waking up. They often have nightmares and night terrors. Um, their growth is sometimes delayed or stunt. Uh, chronic allergies, asthma, um, they have eczema, upper respiratory infections, depressions, dark circles under the eyes. So these are kids that wake up and they already look tired in the morning. Chronic swollen adenoids and tonsils. Sometimes they have aggressive behavior. So they're very irritable. They show anger. They will one day love you. The next day they hate you. They're very moody. Um, and so that disrupts the family and it creates problems with their friends because they don't understand what's happening to these children. So daytime drowsiness, these are kids that fall asleep in the middle of the classroom or even watching their favorite um, TV show. Frequently waking up at night, sleep talking, sleepwalking. Um, they don't make it to the bathroom. Um, morning headaches, um, teeth grinding is not there, but that's another um, common symptom. So an estimated nine out of 10 kids suffer from one or more of these symptoms. And many children struggle with these symptoms on a daily basis. So I bet you know at least one child like this. This is pretty significant, people. Research has shown over the past 20 years that some of these symptoms are related to a root cause, and that is called sleep-related breathing disorders. Um, this is an all-inclusive term for breathing, from di breathing difficulties that range from mild snoring to severe airway obstruction during sleep. Uh, when your child's breathing, it, it, is, it is disrupted. His or her body recognizes this disruption as choking. And so um, the heart rate gets low, blood pressure goes up, it break, wakes up the brain and disrupts the sleep. So traditionally, um, there have been very few answers to treating this issue and treatment has been left to just re, um, reducing the symptoms without correcting the actual root cause. So this is a new topic in dentistry. It's not something that it's taught in dental schools. I, I didn't learn that in dental school. It's not taught in dental schools yet. Um, in fact, just in the last couple of years, the American Dental Association and the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry are now recognizing airway issues as a topic of great importance in children. So what options do parents have to help their children with these symptoms? So, so far we've been treating symptoms separately and treatment goes from psychiatric testing to counseling and therapy surgery, they get the tonsils and the adenoids removed by the ENTs, sleep studies. These are good because they confirm that there are some sleep issues and there's some poor oxygenation. However, oftentimes they do not offer a treatment solution. They just recognize the problem. Allergy testing, special education, tutoring when they're having problems in school, sleep aids. Some children take melatonin at night to help them sleep better. Diet changes, um, rapid palatal expansor, that's what we do at the office as dentists. Um, not there, but some of these children are placed on CPAPs at an early age. The problem with the CPAP is just the pressure of oxygen that's going, helping them breathe, but it's not solving the problem. Um, stimulant drugs, children are given stimulants or other prescription drugs but they make them feel tired and groggy and they have a poor appetite and don't like to eat too much, they get moody. Um, it can cause constipation, dry mouth, weight gain, blurred vision. So these are all the things that we've been trying to use to treat these symptoms individually. So as you can see, children are often treated by different specialties, specialists, each trying to figure out how to resolve the symptoms when it may just come down to, you know, working together to develop the airway. Now, what do these treatments have in common? 
they the problem is that they only address the symptoms we are not addressing the root cause they turn to be band-aids medications help for a while once the child gets used to them then we have to find another medication that works better often um the drugs like i said have side effects and you know they it can be costly painful time consuming um, for a family with a child who suffers from sleep disorder breathing this inability to um, correct the problems can be very frustrating um, so we, we often feel like we're running out of options. And our healthcare system, it simply does not have great solutions to this crisis. So how can a dentist help? How can dentistry help? Studies have shown that uh, many sleep disorder breathing symptoms are created or impacted by four things that are directly related in the mouth. And that one of them is mouth breathing, a narrow palate, improper jaw relationships, the upper and the lower jaw are not sitting in the right position, or improper tongue position, tongue placement. So as a pediatric dentist, we are in a privileged position to possibly impact our patient's growth and development. And I've, I've always seen my patients as a whole, not, not just as a set of teeth, um, so I've always paid close attention to their overall health. Um, I had a patient the other day that came to the office for the first time to check on the, on their, you know, the teeth, see if they, he had cavities, the way the teeth were coming in. Um, and while I'm doing the exam, I'm noticing that many of these things that, you know, he's having many other things. And so I start asking questions, you know, about snoring and mouth breathing, the quality of the sleep, behavior. And mom was actually surprised that I could accurately describe this child that I've never seen before. Um, and there's nothing special about me, no, nothing particularly special about me. I've just gone beyond my traditional training to study enough about airway issues. So as they relate to the mouth, obviously. And uh, I was able to predict certain symptoms based on what I was seeing in the mouth. Because now it's not just about treating cavities or making teeth straight, it's about the overall future health of the patient. Now, when I see a child like this, you know, they walk in my office and they already look tired. It's, it's, it's the morning and they are looking, you know, they have dark um, circles around the eyes. That's called venous pulling. Um, they, have, they are breathing through the mouth. They have chapped lips. The teeth are hanging out of the mouth. They can't sit um, still at the office. They are easily distracted or irritable. They don't cooperate much. Look at these children, and I wonder, you know, is, there, is this a healthy child, or is there something else that's causing them to look this way? When I see the profile of a patient, some children, you know, come in, and they, they look with the, where their faces seem like they haven't grown in the right direction. For example, the lower jaw looks small and pushed back, um, or they're forcing their lips together to keep their mouth closed. Again, is this a healthy child? I'm sure you've seen them. Now, what are the root causes of sleep disorder breathing and sleep deprivation in children? Um, there's a much more, um, we're more aware now of the effects that this condition has in, in children. And why are we just now talking about sleep disorder breathing and sleep deprivation in children? Um, research over the last few years has found that um, improper breathing can lead to a reduction of the amount of oxygen that gets in the brain, that gets to the brain and the body. So when you don't get enough oxygen, the body's interpreting this as you're choking, you gotta wake up. And if you never make it to a restful sleep because you're constantly waking up at night, your brain does not have the chance to process what you've learned through the day. And so release the toxins, reboot for the next day so it doesn't go through that restorative phase. So it's a lot like a computer. If it's not on, you cannot hit save or delete or reboot. So this has a direct impact on the body functions and the growth and development of a child. There's also research that has linked the airway issues to common dental problems, and this is where we come in. 
So uh, mouth breathing, tongue ties, teeth grinding, underdeveloped arches, upper and lower jaws, teeth crowding, teeth misalignment, and improper tongue placement. So mouth breathing allows the mandible to be displaced lower and the tongue to be displaced low. And it causes the uh, reduced airway. What happens with mouth breathing is the tongue is positioned, is, the tongue is a powerful muscle, let's just start there. It has the potential to reshape the palate and the teeth, um, it can move teeth in different ways and it can create other problems when it's not in the right place. So it should be resting on your palate to create that wide, nice U-shaped palate. Now patients that have tongue ties, tongue thrusting habits, um, their mouth breathing, the tongue stays low. And when it stays low, it creates a vacuum that reshapes the palate to be narrow. So habits like finger sucking and pacifier and bottle habits, they also develop an abnormal tongue posture. So let's see how, what the normal craniofacial or the head and face growth looks like. If you look at this line, you're gonna see a two-year-old from two years old to 17-year-old, that's, that's the way we grow. We grow in a downward and forward way. But by two years old, we're halfway done. It's 50, we're 55% developed. So by 12, we're already 80 to 90% developed. It doesn't mean that we can't help an older child that is still you know, going through some growth burst, but the results are going to be certainly more limiting because we have a narrower window of opportunity to impact growth and development. So this shows you that we have between, between four to six years old, we are in the ideal position to impact change. After that, it just keeps narrowing down. Early intervention is going to be key. Now the normal growth, like I said before, is forward and downward, but why are so many children not experiencing this normal growth and development? There's a very nice um, study that shows how dietary changes can impact the growth and development. It says that children needs can, they need consistency and toughness to promote proper grown growth and proper permanent tooth eruption, bringing about the ideal occlusion. All that means is, you know, we've been eating processed foods that are soft, and why, while we think that they're safer because they are not a choking hazard and they're obviously more convenient for us as parents, the reality is that we are not allowing the child to use their muscles of mastication and the tongue to act normal, to develop the teeth and to develop the bone in the mouth. And so if we study populations from first to third generation, people that have been um, on this soft diet, you know, back in the day, the first generation, babies were nursed and they were weaned off the breast and they, they would just eat the regular food, what mom and dad were eating. Um, now look how dramatic malocclusion of problems with the bite are as we go down generations and we've introduced a soft diet to our um, children. So we've already discussed what a soft diet does to um, shape the mouth. Let's talk about some other habits, common infant habits. We have the prolonged use of a pacifier or finger habits, um, prolonged nipple bottle feeding. There is um, a lot to do with the time and intensity of these habits. As I said before, um, the tongue is a powerful muscle. And when you have something that's interfering with what it needs to be doing, it will create problems. So we have a pacifier, we have a bottle nipple, we have a finger that's in the way in between your tongue and your palate. And so this is going to create an abnormal way of swallowing. It's going to develop poor uh, muscle tone in the mouth. So children are gonna have problems swallowing. They are going to develop some um, changes in the mouth. And this shows you how, um, the mouth can be open at the front as a result of you know, these sucking habits. Um, you can't really swallow with your mouth open. Try it. I want you to really try it now. It's very difficult, right? Now, when you have an open bite like the one showing in the pictures here, the tongue is going to move 
forward to create a seal because we have to be able to create a seal to swallow better. We swallow two times a day during the day. I mean, two times per minute during the day and one time per minute at night. Can you imagine all the times that we swallow during the day with this irregular swallow? So the tongue moves forward to close the space, but at the same time is keeping the space open because it's just pushing against those teeth. It creates an abnormal way of swallowing and that will definitely affect speech. It, you know, it will create some speech, um, speech issues like um, the tongue slipping out with lifts and problems with articulation. Um, it could also create feeding issues. Um, children are going to have difficulty processing foods um, in their mouth because um, the tongue is just loose. It's doing whatever it wants and not what it's supposed to be doing. So let's move on and talk a little bit about the upper airway. This is what the upper airway looks like. The nose and the mouth are the first components of the upper airway. It's in the front area, but if that front area is not developed properly, it's going to push back into the breathing tube. And that is composed, you know, that's made of the nasopharynx right up here, the oropharynx, and the laryngopharynx. So for, um, for patients that are mouth breathing and their mouth is hanging open, all this is pushed back into this airway and it's blocking the amount of air and oxygen that goes through the body. So the mouth was not meant to be used to breathe. For that, we have the nose. And the nose has several functions. They ha it has several functions. It serves um, as a passage for the air to go by. It warms and moistens the air that we breathe. It has cilia and mucous membranes. It's like a filter that traps the dust and the pollen and bacteria. It produces nitric, nitric acid. And that it's like an antibacterial product that will help you know, clean all the air that's going in through your nose. Um, it has olfactory receptors, which is what sorts out, you know, the good odors from the bad ones. Um, it also helps in speech, in phonation, the quality of the voice. It, it's completely dependent on how the nose is working. So we're going to um, see an airway of a 10-year-old. This is a normal airway right here. If you look at, remember that pipe that I told you with breathing pipe? This is pretty wide and open. And a child's breathing through the nose, all the way down here. That's a lot of space for air and oxygen to go through. Now look at the right. You're going to see restricted airway. Look at how tiny that is. It's, it's all, a third of what this airway looks like. And so you're going to notice that the mandible is back and it's steeper than this one. So the lower and the lower jaw is more posterior and, and more steep, it will create a contraction here. So this is what those two patients look like in real life. So we have children with normal development of the face where the face is a little bit rounder. It, the lower jaw is pushed forward. Um, and this is a child with an underdeveloped mandible. So you can see that it's straighter back in this area it's just shorter than what we see here. Let's, um, let's talk about mouth breathing. Um, and also let's talk about how cute this little baby is, isn't she? We see pictures like this on social media all the time, you know, and hashtag pass out, hashtag the cutest. Um, we also see videos of kids snoring and as cute as it may be, this is not normal. Mouth breathing and snoring, it's not normal. It's not the proper way of breathing. Uh, when I was in my pediatric dentistry residency, we had to do a, an anesthesia rotation. And I probably forgot a lot of what they taught me back then. But one of the things that stuck with me was um, to realize that snoring is a sign of an airway obstruction. So what happens when your mouth breathing is your mouth is open, it, can, it closes the airway because it's not the right way of breathing. 
the tongue is pushed back into the airway and that creates the snoring noises. So if your tongue is back, pressed against that little thing that hangs in the back of your throat called the uvula, it's going to make it vibrate when you breathe the air in and that creates the snoring noises. The mouth breathing also does not allow the tongue to be positioned correctly during swallowing. Um, and it does not allow the child to develop the mandible in the proper way. So if the mouth is open, the tongue is hanging, it doesn't have a way to push back against that palate the way it should be when we're breathing and where we're just at rest. And these patients that are not treated early are going to be the adults with sleep apnea and sleep deprivation. And the problem is once we're done growing, we're, d we're doomed. That's it. We're done. We just have to use band-aids to be able to breathe better. So mouth breathing does not purify the air like the nose. Um, it creates problems like um, swollen tonsils and adenoid, chronic allergies, eczema, because the tonsils and the mouth were not made, meant to purify the air that goes in the body. So that's what happens when one part of the body is trying to do what another part of the body was meant to do. All right, let's watch this video real carefully. This is very scary. When you have, if you have a child with sleep difficulties and a little bit of apnea, like what we just saw, you know what I mean. You know, these are children that we watch when they're asleep and we're going, okay, breathe, breathe now. And it, it just, it's not the way it's meant to be. So let's look at a perfect five-year-old. Um, when we see the mouth of a five-year-old, we want to see spaces in between the teeth. We do not want an open bite in the front. We do not want crowding between those lower front teeth or even the upper front teeth. We do not want a deep bite where you can't see the lower teeth. And we do not want perfect teeth. We, do, we don't want to see teeth that are touching nicely and perfectly straight. When I see patients that come with this perfect five-year-old bite, I usually prepare the parents for what's coming. I tell them take lots of pictures now, you know, save the money for the ortho later, and most of all, do not panic when the permanent teeth come in. Permanent teeth are twice as big as the baby teeth. And so if we don't have a lot of space for the baby teeth, we will definitely not have enough space for the permanent teeth to come in. So we are going to be in for trouble. So that's just the mouth. Let's look at the airway of a five-year-old. Now, on the right, you're gonna see a perfectly normal airway on a five-year-old. See, it's still wide and open right there. Now, we, when we see a, a five-year-old that has restricted airway, look how narrow this becomes. Now, what happens when you have a five-year-old who breathe through it through their mouth. So oftentimes we have children who show normal open airway when we take an x-ray. This is called a cephalometric x-ray. Um, but look at what happens on the right when this very same child opens up the mouth to breathe via during the day or at night. It's pretty significant reduction, don't you think? Look at that. From this wide open space to this. And so children are going around the, you know, about their days with this very narrow pipe. Now, what does your child airway look like? Well, the reality is without an x-ray, it is very difficult to see what the airway really looks like, but um, it should be white like a garden hose right here. And a typical airway in children is about seven millimeters wide. That's the size of a Slurpee straw. 
So when the airway is compromised or restricted, it could be reduced significantly. So it could look like a coffee straw right here on the left. And I have these straws at the office just to illustrate breathing to the parents. And I, when I see a child that's struggling with breathing, I ask the parents to breathe through that coffee straw, not the mouth, I mean, not the nose, just through, through the straw and walk down the hallway. And most of them don't even make it to the hallway. Um, it is quite the revelation. So if we don't always have the capability of doing an x-ray to figure out, you know, how the airway looks like, how else are we going to know that there may be some breathing difficulties? We look at the symptoms. And we've already established, right, the link between common dental issues and the outward symptoms of sleep disorder breathing. Now, let's review what happens, just a summary here. So when we have extended bottle feeding, pacifier use, um, poor tongue positioning, abnormal swallowing, the diet with the processed foods that do not allow those oral muscles to develop properly, poor oral habits like thumb sucking, finger sucking, lip sucking, um, even tongue sucking. I had a patient the other day like that. Um, tongue ties, all that creates an underdeveloped dental arch. So upper jaw and lower jaw, they're not developed properly. They're not growing in that downward and forward position which compromises the airway. So once we have a compromised airway, we start seeing the symptoms, mouth breathing, snoring, swollen adenoids and tonsils chronically, um, low tongue position, lung um, tongue thrusting habits, underdeveloped arches, um, crowding, crooked teeth, over jet, which is the space in between the upper and the lower teeth, um, an open bite, like we saw in that picture previously, or a cross bite where the teeth are just crooked, you know, biting sideways. And all these things are going to lead to sleep disorder breathing and symptoms. And what we see is, we again, we see a restless sleep. We see a child that's waking up many times during the night, ADD, ADHD symptoms, bedwetting, chronic allergies, nightmares, daytime drowsiness, aggressions, defiance, anger, difficulty in school. So when all um, where everything has to work in sync in the body for the for it to function properly. So when things are out of whack, everything else get um, out of whack. Let's see. Let's talk a little bit more about. Let's go back to ADD and ADHD. Many children are often labeled with ADHD and ADD because they struggle with cooperation or concentration in school, or they're constantly moving around, disrupting the classroom, trying to you know, um, help other people or bothering other people in the classroom, or they're just spaced out and not concentrating enough to follow along with you know, the other children. Um, what if, this is just a what if, what if they're just tired and exhausted and they're fidgeting because it's the way for them to stay awake. I'm not saying all of the ADHD and all the ADD patients have sleep disorder breathing, but there is a study that um, Dr. Karen Bonnet did, and it talks about the relationships between sleep disorder breathing and ADD and ADHD symptoms or diagnosis. And so the long-term effects of sleep deprivation and sleep disorder breathing in regards to the behavioral issues is that most kids, you know, 50% of these kids are held back one grade. And if they pass, they don't have good grades. You know, we have 30% that are held back two grades. And again, it may not be, they might be bright and smart. They're just tired. They just can't cope with the demands of a daily routine. So imagine the impact that we can have in your child and their success in school and in life. So the study suggests that a lot of these kids are showing these symptoms because they're sleep deprived. In this case, giving them medication may not have been the ultimate solution to the problem, but if we can identify these children, treatment may be simpler and long lasting. If you have a child, an older child, who struggles with bedwetting, you know how difficult 
this is. You know how it disrupts the whole family life. These children, they wake up in the middle of the night. They're like, oh, no, not again. You know, they're embarrassed. They feel guilty. They are anxious. They have to wake up the parents to let them know, to change the sheets, you know, help them out. They Oftentimes, they wear pull-ups, you know, well into eight and nine years old. Um, and they may not even want to go to sleepovers because they're embarrassed. They don't want to be with their friends like that. So what happens here is when you can't get enough oxygen in your brain, the body is going to attend to the most important functions of the body, which are you know, your heart and your brain. So you got to keep that heart pumping to stay alive. You got to keep the brain going to stay alive. So those two things are going to be first and everything else takes a second turn. So as a result, your bladder control gets affected. There are other theories, and we won't go into all those details, but basically, your body is too preoccupied keeping you alive. Forget about, you know, releasing um, the urine. So to recap, let's recap all the symptoms that we discussed at the beginning and see them from the perspective of what we've learned so far. Um, a child who has breathing difficulties uh, will have reduced oxygen, right? We talked about that. They're going to have less oxygen capacity to their brain and their bodies. So, again, the body interprets this as choking. Wake up. You need to breathe. Happens multiple times during the night. So, the, it shows as restless sleep, nightmares, bedwetting, sleepwalking, sleep talking, Without that proper REM sleep, without, you know, if the child keeps waking up, they cannot get to that phase of sleep that is going to be rebooting your brain and resting your body. And so if the body cannot be restored, then when the kids wake up, they wake up tired, they're irritable, they have dark circles around the eyes, they are going to fall asleep in the car on the way to school or at breakfast or in school. They... Um, are drowsy during the day. When they get to school, they are going to have trouble concentrating and learning. They get fidgety, so they get in trouble for trying to stay awake. Um, or they flat out fall asleep in the middle of the class. Now, the chronic allergies, the asthma, the recurrent upper respiratory infections, those are more related to the mouth breathers who don't have the ability to purify the air as we talked about when we talked about how the nose works to um, purify the air that we breathe. Now, knowing what you know now, isn't it pretty amazing how our children can function on a daily basis with all these limitations? I would have been in the corner hiding if I don't get more than the amount of sleep that, that I need for the next day. So what can we possibly do to help this sleep-related breathing disorder epidemic in children? We can fix it. So. Pediatric dentists are like the Bob the Builder or the handy money of sleep disorder breathing if the issues have a dental root cause. I'm not saying all of the issues have a dental root cause, but because, uh, you know, sometimes they're related to other causes and, and you know, it, it's a different story. But if they are related to a dental root cause, we are in a unique position to help development, the development of growth and, and, and um, proper function. So we can help better the airway, but this takes a team effort. We, um, Dr. Gilminolt is the sleep physician who discovered sleep apnea. And I had the privilege of meeting him at the ADA uh, first children's airway health conference this past August. And it was a very exciting event. You know, for the first time we had all kinds of specialists come together to um, see how we can help collaborate and work together and helping our patients with sleep disorder ratings because you know up until you know recently we were all trying to figure it out separately so in his presentation he said that if sleep disorder breathing is suspected early treatment should be done at the same time the problem is recognized so kids are not going to grow out of it they are not going to get better the earlier we treat them the better one treatment that he proposed as you can see over there in the slide is to whiten up the palate. And I can tell you that back when my son was struggling and, you know, way before I knew what I know now, he needed palatal expansion. So being a good mom and a good dentist, I gave that treatment to him. And 
I just wanted to improve the bite. I didn't think of anything else because what happened, it also improved his airway and reduced some of the symptoms that he had from sleep disorder breathing. So how can we help out? Here's how. I was trained to predict problems in the mouth, you know, as the children were growing. And oftentimes I found myself without solutions to give to my patients. So when I learned about Healthy Start and I was very excited, you know, um, to come across this system, it meant to me and to my practice and to my patients that I have found that missing link that they needed. Some of them, some of my patients needed. So Healthy Start is an appliance system that works to guide your child's teeth and jaws into the proper position. It uses their own growth and development and to open up the airway and to help them get the quality of sleep that they deserve. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Earl Bergenson. He, he's the founder of Healthy Start. I had the pleasure of meeting him in person and he's such a sweet gentleman, you know, with such a passion for helping children. He was trained as an orthodontist and he wanted to create solutions for his younger patients. So he created an appliance to develop an appliance that will allow the teeth to grow in the right position. And along the way, you know, he realized that he was helping them more than he imagined. People were coming back to him, telling him, you know, so what you do? Uh, this my child was suffering from this and that and the other, and now it's gone away since they've been wearing the appliance. And so this made him curious, and it made him continue his research and develop the appliances that we have today that help children deal with um, the airway symptoms. The Healthy, Start, the Healthy Start appliances, they are BPA free, they're latex free, they have no plasticizers, no silicone, they are FDA cleared and regulated class two medical devices. Um, they have successfully treated over 4 million cases worldwide. What can Healthy Start do? It can expand the dental arches. Remember we talked about, you know, when the upper jaw is narrow, things don't work as well. Well, this appliance will help open up that dental arch. It will establish nasal breathing. We already talked about how important it is to breathe through the nose and not through the mouth. Um, it trains the tongue. When the tongue's not functioning properly and it's not sitting where it's supposed to be, these appliances are gonna teach the tongue, the muscle, it's gonna teach the tongue where to go when it needs to work. And so it teaches the tongue to, prop, to do proper swallowing and it also helps with speech. Um, it eliminates bad habits. So children that are stuck on the thumb and the tongue thrusting habits and they have a, a very abnormal swallowing um, and they have open bites, these appliances are going to take those bad habits and make them into good habits and it's also going to change the way that children are going to grow. So it advances the mandible or the lower jaw down one and forward, like we talked before. Um, it helps correct the overjet, which is the space in between the upper and the lower front teeth. So by doing that, it's going to increase the airway and correct most of the symptoms that are caused by sleep deprivation. The, the, the great thing about this is that it's also a, an orthotic device that moves the teeth in the right position. So we have teeth that are coming in all crooked, they get to sit where they should be, and this reduces and eliminates the chances to have to do orthotic treatment later. If we place the teeth in the right position, if the jaws are in the right position, we don't have to worry about it later. They are set where they are supposed to be. Now there is a study, Dr. Bergerson and Brooke Stevens did a study about sleep disorder breathing and what symptoms they have from age two to 19. And they used the questionnaire to evaluate the patients based on, this, on their symptoms. The results are pretty astonishing. Mouth breathing and snoring are commonly associated with sleep disorder breathing symptoms more than any of the other symptoms studied. So what this tells you is if you have a child that has no other symptoms but mouth breathing and snoring, this is significant and we need to treat it. Nine out of 10 children, like we said before, have one or more of these symptoms. 
60% have four or more. One out of five experience bedwetting. Also significant when you have a child, when you think how frustrating this may be for an older child. Between four and 12 years of age, 92% of symptoms did not self-correct, while 30% got worse as the child got older. So children will not grow out of it. And I'm a witness to this. My son, re symptoms remain until we started doing something about it. He started improving once we intervened with treatment. From this study, we can learn that sleep disorder breathing symptoms are very common. It affects children as early as two years old. Early intervention helps avoid symptoms from getting worse with age. And identifying these symptoms is the first step to get treatment and to get help. So let's see some case studies. Let's see some patients. So this is Michael at age nine on the left right here. And we have Michael at age 14. Look at those chubby cheeks. Look how cute that is. It's cute, but it's not functional. Look at his jaw is way pushed back. And he's probably having issues with his airway. Look at how much better he looks at 19 after treat, after at 14 after treatment. This is Michael on an x-ray. So this is how compromised his airway was with you know that chin pushed back and into that airway. Look at how his airway looks so much better after treatment. Now look at the teeth. So this is Michael when he started. This is Michael at 14. No brackets, no wires. Remember what I said? You know, the system not only allows the jaw to be positioned properly, it also allows the arches to develop properly and it will allow the teeth to come in the right spot. So here he had a deep bite and a low, the lower front teeth, you can hardly see them. They're touching the palate way up here. Look at how nice. Once he's done with treatment, you can see the lower teeth. There's wider arches. You can see those teeth all the way to the back. Now, that's his face at 14. Look how he developed nicely, but most importantly, he had no more sleep disorder breathing symptoms. Now, this cute little five-year-old, see the huge gap she has between the upper and the lower teeth. And sometimes this is due to habits, so like thumb sucking habits or pacifier habits creates that space because the thumb and the finger and um, the pacifiers sit right here pushing that upper jaw forward and the teeth go with it. And so this is this child at five, and look at her with treatment. This didn't happen overnight. It just, she didn't grow out to be this way. This is with treatment at seven. And look how good it still looks by the time she's 12 years old. So way after treatment's completed, no braces, no retention needed because the jaws were placed in the right position and they were guided to be where they should be, where they're more stable. So there's no need to retention. There's no need for a retainer because the teeth are where they need to be. Those fibers that attach the teeth to the bone are gonna set those teeth permanently in the right place. Now this is a 12 year old and we, I know we mentioned before that the older the patient, the lesser the chance of helping him or her permanently. However, if there's still some growth left in this patient, we can still influence the growth um, with the appliances. So look at his teeth, you know, they're all pushed forward um, all over the place here. And look at him two years later with treatment. That looks pretty good. This is um, an eight-year-old. Again, look at those chubby cheeks and the Jaws pushed back. Um, he developed into a nice young man at 14. Look at how the lower part of his face is more de face is more developed with intervention. This is him before treatment. You can only see those front teeth. They're sticking out. They're coming in the room before the child gets in. Can barely see the back. Barely see those back teeth. One year later with treatment, you can see how much wider these. Pal the palate and the lower jaw are, so you can see all the way back. More room in here means more room for the teeth and more room for the airway. Now, this is another patient just looking from um, just the teeth, and you can see crowding here. Look at how the patient looks 12 months into healthy start. So it's pretty impressive how 
we can treat a patient that not only has dental problems, but also has airway issues. And we can help both things to bring them to better health. And um, one of the things that I love the most about being a pediatric dentist is that we have the unique opportunity to make a positive impact in kids' lives. You know, it's, I've been in practice for 24 years now, and it gives me great joy to see my former patients bringing their children to me to be my patients. But let me tell you, there's nothing more rewarding than to be able to give a child who's struggling in life the tools to succeed. It's not just about being cavity free or having good oral hygiene anymore. It's about developing this child so that he or she can be the best version of themselves. So Healthy Start is a safe, effective, and holistic way to evaluate and treat your child. It's non-surgical, non-pharmaceutical, pain-free, and non-invasive. And so it's a therapy that can treat children in a conservative, natural way. If you've had braces, you know what I'm talking about. It's, it's, this is different. This is the natural way of treating teeth. If you suspect your child suffers from sleep disorder breathing, I want to encourage you this year, please give your child the gift of a healthy start in life. Let's get them evaluated. Let's see if this is where the problem is gaining from. And if it is, let's get them to better health. Now, if you um, would like more information, you can go to our website. If you're in the Brains and Sarasota area, I would like to invite you to our free Healthy Start Dental Sleep Airway Assessment. It's going to be this coming Thursday, December 6th, from 4 to 7 p.m. So after school, you can stop by the office. Um, call first. It'll be nice if you call so we can get you on the schedule. Um, but we will be checking, you know, patients. It's a free evaluation. Um, we are looking forward to seeing you there. And I appreciate you for joining us and being curious enough to want to help someone you know. My mission, as I said before, is to help as many children as we can. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, you all have taken the first step into helping your children grow up into healthy adults. I think the biggest thing that we can take away from tonight is that it, early intervention is key. We have to help our children be able to grow up into healthy, happy adults. So um, thank you, Dr. Santos, for everything tonight. This was a great presentation. Please reach out to Dr. Santos if, if you're in her area. If you're not in her area, um, please visit the Healthy Start website, thehealthystart.com. There's a doctor locator. You can put your uh, zip code in there and find a provider in your area. Again, thank you so much for attending tonight, um, and we hope to see your children as Healthy Start patients. Thank you so much. Bye. Have a good night.